Hi, I'm Kathy Cruz. I'm a retail coach, a retail store owner, and host of the Savvy Shopkeeper Retail Podcast. I personally know how busy shopkeepers are, so I like to keep podcast episodes short and sweet. These bite-sized podcast episodes, though, they're full of value because I want to help you work less, profit more, and grow your business. This short video introduction is going to be followed by a podcast episode, so feel free to multitask, especially if you have your AirPods in, but sometimes you're going to want to take notes. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you get notified every time I publish a new podcast episode or a new video. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Independent retail business can mean so many things these days. A brick and mortar store, an e-commerce business, a maker's online shop, a booth at an antique mall, and more. No matter which category you're in, Kathy Cruz, a fellow retail business owner and retail educator, will teach you how to market and manage your business efficiently so you can spend time doing other things you love. Welcome to the Savvy Shopkeeper Podcast. Welcome to episode 64 of the Savvy Shopkeeper Retail Podcast. My best tips for decluttering your mind. I'm your host, Kathy Cruz. My intention for this episode is to share some simple tips to help you declutter your mind. (laughs) You're probably thinking, Kathy, there's no way you can help me with that. But these practices, they help me with daily decluttering, project decluttering, and big mindset blocks. But for today's episode, since I only have about 20 minutes, we're going to focus on the daily decluttering process, particularly in our stores, while we're in our stores or in our work studios. Before we get started, I want to make sure that I mention that the 2021 Savvy Shopkeeper survey is closing. I announced that I published this survey to get feedback, and it's been a while since I've done a survey, but customer you know, listener surveys are really important to me because I want to know how I can best serve all of you. I ask about this podcast. I ask questions about where you're struggling the most, about future Savvy Shopkeeper events, and more. And I also tried to make it as simple as possible. There's lots of multiple choice questions. I didn't want this survey to take you 20 minutes to complete. You know, hopefully it takes you less than five minutes. But I do encourage you to take a few minutes to complete it. It really helps me help you. And if you choose to enter your email address at the end, I'll be drawing two winners, not just one winner, but two winners for one hour coaching calls with me. And that's a $200 value for each call. And, you know, one hour where you can ask me questions or we can talk about your business or maybe we can even review your P&L, although that would be a really fast review. But that one hour could be really helpful to you. So entering your email address is optional. I want to add that. So if you want to complete the survey and you want it to be anonymous, that's completely fine too. Your email address is not required. It's optional and it's at the end. And if you're listening to this episode the day it's actually published, you should know that the survey will close tomorrow on Friday, March 19th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hopefully I got that date right. Over 60 of you have completed the survey so far. If you've already taken the time to complete it, I sincerely appreciate it. It has been really enlightening. And I will share, of course, I would never share any names or any, any, uh, anyone's specific information. But overall, I will share some of the results of the survey because it's been really interesting. So again, thank you if you've completed it. Thank you if you hop onto the survey. We'll have it linked in the show notes. So that means in the description of this podcast, you'll see it and you'll also see it on my website at SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash episode 64. Okay, time to dig into this episode. Over the past year, I've heard that humans have thousands of thoughts per day. And I don't know which number is valid because when I started researching, I've always heard 60,000 thoughts, but then when I started researching, the number 6,000 kept coming up. And and I guess in the end, it really doesn't matter. That's what I, I just scrapped the whole research process. It really doesn't matter. It's, re, it's a ridiculous number of thoughts, whether it's 6,000 or 60,000, right? I think that's my point here. It's no wonder we often feel overwhelmed. 
we experience foggy brain syndrome, and sometimes we just feel so disorganized when it comes to our businesses. For many retail business owners, and I say this all the time, but we wear so many hats, even when we have a good team in place. Personally, for me, this means that when I get into my own store, I have tasks related to inventory, social media, email marketing, CEO work, and then I have the creative work, like painting a custom piece of furniture for a customer, and sometimes that's stressful. You know, that's a piece of furniture that our customer probably inherited or might have special meaning, and then they trust us with it, and we have to make it beautiful for them. That's, there's some pressure there. But my point is, it's usually a variety of things when I walk into my store that I have to do, and I can feel like I'm hopping from one place to the next and then all while taking care of customers in between. I'm sure you can feel me. You're probably all shaking your heads like, yes, Kathy, I know exactly what you're talking about. So over the past month or so, there have been several occasions and probably because of our kind of our growth spurt or where we are in business, but there have been several occasions where I walk into the store and I'm all over the place, bouncing around like a chicken with my head cut off, My sister would be laughing right now. There's no rhyme or reason. And when this happens, I tend to waste a lot of time. And that is not acceptable. So I only work in my store on Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 to 4 and every other Saturday. This means that I must, and I'm like emphasizing must make the most of my time. And I have to be as productive and possible as possible in those six hours because I don't want to work on my retail business while I'm home. Now, yes, of course it happens and it does, but the overall goal is to work on and in the store while I'm at the store. That's what I've worked towards over the past few years. It's not just me, though. I see the conversations, especially in Master Shopkeepers, where brick and mortar store owners have a hard time focusing on the long list of things to do, their long to do list, or when it comes to tackling a really big project, maybe like inventory management or setting up systems and processes to start hiring. So you're probably all wondering what's my best tip? And this is going to feel, I don't know, very basic, but just follow along with me. So my best tip is I I call it a good old brain dump. You see, we store a lot of information in our brains, but that's it. It's stored in our brains without any organization. Our brain doesn't always nicely package a system or the steps we need to take in order to feel like we can take action, like good action. If anything, a cluttered mind can cause inaction. And this is what's been happening to me when I walk in my store. I should say inaction or maybe disorganized action. This episode is brought to you by Flowdesk. Email marketing shouldn't be so hard. That's what I thought for years when I struggled using another software program to design and send emails for my retail store. Then Flowdesk came along. Now it's so easy to design and send beautifully branded emails to our customers that convert into sales. I also use Flowdesk to send the Savvy Shopkeeper newsletter. Flowdesk is a woman-owned company and the software is in beta, which means they're still new and building some features, but personally, I have loved it. If you have an email list of over a thousand or more subscribers and you send emails to your customers pretty regularly, you know the monthly price for email marketing can add up. At this time, Flowdesk is offering unlimited subscribers and unlimited emails for $38 a month. But I have a special offer for you. You can have unlimited subscribers and send unlimited emails for only $19 a month. To get half off the monthly price of $38, yes, it's only $19 a month, visit SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash Flowdesk for a special link. That's SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash Flowdesk, F-L-O-D-E-S-K. So the first step in a brain dump is to write it out. What I realized helps me out the most, whether it's a daily decluttering or a project decluttering, is to dump all these thoughts out onto paper. Literally, it's pen and paper. Or if you prefer, 
It could be digital. It could be a keyboard and software. You choose what works best for you. For me, I usually start with pen and paper. It's simple. It's always around. And then if needed, I'll move on to something like Trello. And that's a planning software that I use. I've talked about it in other episodes. And you'll find a link to Trello on the resources page of my website. And of course, we'll link it in the show notes, but it's SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash resources. And I have a lot of resources, software tools, things that I recommend on that page. I'm going to say it again, just in case. SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash resources. So moving on, I want to share an example of a daily decluttering that I do. So I got into my store one day in early March, and not only was our studio cluttered, and that can happen in our studio, we had lots of projects going, but my brain was cluttered too, and clutter causes overwhelm, and again, either inaction or wasted action. So I took out a pen, I just paused, like literally forced myself just to stop, because I was just bouncing around. It almost felt reckless. (laughs) So I took out a pen and literally dumped everything I needed to do that day in those six hours onto a piece of paper. It was sloppy, it was ugly, and it didn't matter. You could be thinking, Kathy, this is just a to-do list, but it's not. If I brain dumped a to-do list, that list would have been miles long, miles. And most likely yours would be too, right? So the next step is the one that's probably the most important And it's the key to successful action is to make it realistic and do what's important. If you haven't read The One Thing by Gary Keller, and I think it's Jay Papasan maybe is the other author's name, I'll have the book linked in the show notes. I highly recommend it. Again, the name of the book is The One Thing. One premise in the book is to focus on what's important rather than constantly putting out fires. And this is a book that I read, and I'll never forget it, because I read some books, and I'm like, okay, on occasion, it'll be a good point. But this book was a book that I constantly paused, and I think I was reading it on an app, and I was able to share or save particular quotes and create little graphics in it um, for each of the quotes. And I just kept pausing and pausing to do that. And that's how I know this book was incredible. So taking this into consideration, I wanted to focus only on my six hours of store-related tasks. I took it one step further and created a short list of what realistically needed to get accomplished on that day, in that time, in those six hours. So I think the list was maybe 10 things, and I wish I would have saved the the actual list, or I wish I would have taken a picture so you could see how imperfect it was. This is for you perfectionists out there. Doesn't matter what this list looks like. It actually wasn't even in any particular order. I put it in an order after that. I just put one through 10. I numbered them. But it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want you to waste any time. Just dump it out, put it in order. And once I dumped it all out on paper, I felt like literally felt my shoulders drop a little. I felt like, okay, now I can focus one task at a time along with the satisfaction of crossing off each item as I accomplished each task. If you love that crossing off the to-do list kind of action, you'll love this too. 10 things might seem like a lot in six hours, but I just want to say that they were all relatively short and the number of tasks isn't what's important. What was important is that I knew I would tackle one task at a time without getting distracted. Before I could move on to the next task, before I gave myself permission to move anywhere else in that studio or do anything else in the store, that one thing on the list had to get done. See what I'm saying here? That one thing. If I value my six hours in the store, and I certainly do, especially after all these years of teaching myself how to do this, then I have to make how I manage my time there a priority. So I'm going to rephrase that and I'm going to say it twice because this might be the biggest lesson you'll get out of this podcast episode. When you start to value time, how you manage it becomes a priority. One more time. (laughs) And for all of you who reach out to me or tell me on um, coaching calls or feedback, um, you all comment about when I do this. So I'm just going to pause one more time and say it again. 
When you start to value time, how you manage it becomes a priority. Again, the biggest, probably the biggest lesson you'll take out of this episode. Now, if you want to power up on your brain dump or level up or however you want to put it, the next thing I would recommend is to declutter your space. If you remember what I said a few minutes ago, not only was my brain cluttered, but our studio was cluttered too. The decluttering of the studio came a few weeks later, but it did happen. Studies show that a cluttered workspace, whether it's an office, a work studio, or even your store contributes to the feeling of overwhelm. This is another thing I often hear members say, or group members say, that when they declutter their storage room, their office, their store, or their work area, the overwhelm lessens and their their efficiency increases. So go ahead and declutter. Get organized. Make your space what it needs to be in order to be the best shopkeeper you can be. I looked back and checked for how many times I thought I shared these tips in previous episodes because I was certain I had, like I was certain I did. And I was shocked to see I only mentioned brain dumping one time in episode 33 when I talked about Trello. Of course, I mentioned it earlier. It's one of my all-time favorite business tools. And if you want to brain dump and get like a larger project organized, I highly recommend software like Trello, some other um, similar software programs are Asana and ClickUp. And again, I I could really go down a rabbit hole on this whole topic. So we'll save that for another episode. But I also realized I talk about my tips for decluttering your mind a lot in Master Shopkeepers. So it felt like I had shared it many times in this podcast. Funny how that works, you know? This episode is brought to you by Tundra. Tundra is an online marketplace for retailers in the United States and Canada. And what I really like about Tundra is that they eliminate transaction fees and markups. As a result, Tundra empowers their community of buyers and suppliers to keep reinvesting in themselves. As a shop small advocate and a buyer for my own retail store, I appreciate that the makers aren't taking a hit on their profit margin when I order from them on Tundra. From home decor to beauty and fashion, there are hundreds, probably even thousands of suppliers to buy from. If you're a brick and mortar store owner and you open a new account, you'll get $50 off your first purchase with Tundra. To get this special offer, visit SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash Tundra. Again, it's SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash Tundra, T-U-N-D-R-A, and you'll get a special link to get $50 off your first purchase. To summarize, my best tips for decluttering your mind is one, brain dump. And part A of that is to write it on paper, but digital works too. And part two of that is to make your action list. And again, this is the most important part, is to make your action list realistic and focus on what's important in that time. The second tip I offered is if needed, declutter your space as well. So I realized over the past year that my zone of genius, and this concept is from another favorite book, The Big Leap, another book I recommend. So there's two books in today's episode. Again, I feel like I need to add these books to my resources page, but we'll link this book in the show notes. It's The Big Leap, and I'm pretty sure the author is Gay Hendricks. I could be wrong but I'm winging it here, but it's the big leap. Now we all have, oh, I forgot to mention, (laughs) I went off on a tangent about the book, but my zone of genius, I think this has been coming out, especially over the past three to four months, is systems and processes. Now I wanna add that we all have a zone of genius. I am not special by any means. I just identified what my zone of genius is. Anyhow, my brain is really good with data, data, whichever you prefer. And it's probably why I loved some of the work I did in my former career. What I'm really good at is making sense of a bunch of information, a bunch of data, whether it's a bunch of numbers or a bunch of cluttered thoughts. So let me give you an example. I am currently working with multiple one-on-one clients and each client's needs and frustrations are a little different. Although I'm finding a lot of clients are coming to me for systems and processes, some for mindset, 
some for definitely a deep dive into their financials and how to grow their business and how to profit more. But some do come to me for systems and processes. And when they book me, they're usually surprised I don't have a form for them to fill out or a questionnaire to complete. And you're probably wondering why. And it's because I prefer to start with all of my one-on-one clients. I prefer that first call to be a brain dump. I call it the brain dump call because I literally want them to dump all of their business-related thoughts on our first call together. I want them to just tell me all of the things that are frustrating them, all the things that they need help with. And they always do. And by the end of the call, they, they always seem to apologize for it. But it really isn't necessary. I don't do this to make them feel bad. And I'm certainly not wasting their time or their first hour call with me. What they don't realize is that during that first call, they literally provided me with their own roadmap to success. Yes, I have to organize their thoughts and I have to come up with a plan and a little bit of a strategy, but I turn their thoughts into a personalized roadmap. And that's essentially what they do for me on that brain dump call. Well, they do it for themselves. It's just that their brains are too cluttered to see it. If you want to see the show notes to this episode or find links to anything I mentioned, you can visit my blog at SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash episode 64. It's SavvyShopkeeper.com forward slash episode 64. I will try to remember to have the survey linked in the show notes and in, in the podcast description so it's easy for you to find. And then I also want to add that I recently announced that my one-on-one client spots are temporarily sold out. If you might have, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you might have seen that. Now that I value my own time, and it took four years to get there, I know that the number of hours that are blocked for work on my own calendar can only fit a certain number of clients. So it is closed right now, but I do have a wait list going and some of you have signed up and I appreciate it. And you can sign up for the wait list if you go to the Shopkeepers Academy website. That's shopkeepersacademy.com. And when a spot does open up, and I think that'll happen in the ne- next month or two, or maybe two spots will open up, whoever's on that email list will get notified first. So we'll have that also, the Shopkeepers Academy linked in the show notes. We're going to have a lot linked in the show notes on this episode. But thank you for listening. Again, I think it's really important to say thank you for taking the time to complete the survey. I genuinely appreciate it. I can already tell from the results on the survey that I will be able to, I guess, start projects or offer things that mean the most to all of you. And I have a lot more information on that coming soon. One of the things on the on the survey is talking about in-person events. And of course, all of that was put on hold. But, and it doesn't surprise me that it's one of the things that you're all asking for the most. So watch for that. And until the next episode, be savvy and boss up.